Um, let me just put this on. Good morning. Uh, it's great to be back, and um, we always enjoy the fellowship of the saints, you know, and um, and we know that it's, um, there's a lot of hardships and there's a lot of um, diff- people going through it's a lot of difficulties and a lot of issues and things, and so we continually need to just continue to continue to remember one another in prayer, and, you know, and um, with a thankful heart, and, um, you know, when we know the God, you know, the, the the peace of God that passes all understandings will keep our hearts and minds, and that's what get us through th- some times of difficulties. And um, you know, it's only once we get to the other side of the difficulties, looking back, says, ah, you know, while we're there, it seems like it's crazy. We, you know, uh, uh, this is I can't handle this. But when you get through it and you've handled it, and God's grace is sufficient for you, and His comfort and His mercy does endure and does help us through it, you look back, He says, hmm. Actually, it wasn't that bad, you know. So um, Paul calls it a light affliction, you know. So it's um, so we, we we consider each one of our, uh, all of you um, in this um, this morning. Go with me, Galatians chapter two. Galatians chapter two. We're going to carry on our study in Galatians, and we're going to start Galatians two from verse eleven. We will not finish this. Just the first part of this section of Galatians chapter two. And the title of this passage from verse 11 to verse 21 of Galatians chapter 2 is Paul rebukes Peter. And it's uh, Paul's rebuke of Peter, and we'll see soon why. We know that Paul is writing to the Galatians. The obvious thing is that the, the Galatians have a problem in that, in that church in that they went from grace to law-keeping and trying to bring the law in and to justify themselves before God and make themselves righteous by doing the law. And we know that the influence to that church was Judaizers that comes in, came into the church and caused a lot of those things. And what we're going to see this morning is that Peter, the apostle who knew that the, that the program has changed, who knew that there is no more difference, actually by his conduct created an understanding in the hearts and the minds of the Galatians and, and others, or not just Galatians, but in, 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 of course, Gentiles to, to, to wonder what is, what's going on. You know, should I live now like a Jew, like with the law and stuff like that? And Paul rebukes Peter for that, and he does that openly, and we'll see that passage this morning. But let's, as we start off, let's read from verse 11. Remember what we've done now is up to now as Paul goes up to Jerusalem with Barnabas and Titus, they are sharing um, what God has given them. They said these guys could not, these who seem to be somewhat added nothing to them. On the contrary, he's telling them a lot of information. He's giving them a lot of information about what's going on. They gave him the right hands of fellowship that he should go to, the, to preach the gospel of the uncircumcision. And they can, and Peter, James, and John's going to preach the gospel of the uh, circumcision, two different gospels, two different groups of people, okay? And so, and, and I said, only thing that we want you to do is to remember the poor saints in Jerusalem and take, and, and, and take, uh, and, 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 and Paul says, I was forward to do that anyway already. I was doing that, but we will continue to do that. And we see Paul later on going back to Jerusalem and obviously with a offering in hand, okay? Um, but in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision." And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If they, if thou, sorry, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, 
that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if one seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain." Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that we can consider it. We thank you that we, are, we have your spirit in us, the Holy Ghost, teaching us your word that's alive and that we can come to the understanding of these things. We praise you for this. Amen. In Galatians chapter 2, this passage here, verses 11, the whole, but I'm not saying the whole book of Galatians is not important, but Galatians chapter 2, from verse 11 to 21. You have to take, and we have to take, not you, but we have to take very careful note of what's been said here. And it's, it's important into the, in, 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 in the understanding of the book, year two. By the way, we've seen Paul in his last part of his, if you will, almost the last installment of improving his apostleship. That is, the apostleship is not sub um, par to what Peter, James, and John is, but that he's on par with the other apostles, because if he wasn't on par and he was below Peter or below anybody else, would he withstood Peter to the face? Would he, you know, he would not uh, do that, okay? And so Paul is an apostle of the Lord, and he's the apostle for the but now, and he has the ministry for the but now, and he's got a revelation that God gives him, and he's the, he's the authority, the apostle with the authority that God has given him for this ministry. And because he had that authority, he could go to Jerusalem and tell them a few things. But also, after that, when Peter behaves uncomely, that he would have the dare to stand up and rebuke Peter. Now, I tell you what, in Christian circles, there's not a lot of people that takes kindly to these words. That's why they don't give attention to Paul so much because, you know, Peter is the main guy. You know, if you ask general Christian, who's the, who's the main apostle of all time? They're going to say, who? Peter. Okay? By the way, if you read Scripture, you see Peter being superseded by another apostle under that, under that circumcision. Who's he? James. Who was not part of the first ap- cho- chosen twelve, by the way. Okay, he was not James, the son of Zebedee, the brother of John. It was another James, okay? And commonly believe among some that is the, the, the brother of the Lord Jesus. But anyway, we're, we're not going to get into that detail now. But what we see is after they have the right hand of fellowship, they said, you go and preach that. We understand what God is doing. We're not going to put this yoke that we can't even ourselves bear, says in Acts chapter 15, the, the yoke we couldn't bear. We're not going to put that yoke upon the Gentiles. But we see clearly from Peter's conduct when he comes among the Gentiles that he behaves that says, hey, okay, you know what? I can't have fellowship with you because these guys from James are going to, you know, have a problem with that. And so he, 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 does, he, he behaves not according to the gospel. He goes contrary to the gospel. And that's why, Peter is with, uh, with, uh, that's why Paul is going to withstand him. And he says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Wow. Imagine calling Peter and say, you to be blamed, Peter. And now I've got to withstand you to the face. I'm going to have to get right in your face about this. And I'm going to do this in front of everybody. Wow. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, uh, that takes a lot of guts. It doesn't take, it takes a lot of guts for a man to do that. But you know what? God was seen Paul doing this. He's full with the Spirit when he's doing this because he's contrary to the gospel. Peter, who understands some things, is contrary to the gospel. Who was this Peter? Well, we know who Peter was. Peter was the preacher of the law. Peter was a preacher of the gospel of the circumcision to the nation of Israel. And by the way, under the circumcision, 
it was not for them to have company with the uncircumcised under that gospel. Okay, it was part of that detail. Uh, but you see, in the beginning, let's go, a few th- let's go a little bit back. I, I'm going to try to slow down because I've, I've, got, I've got so much stuff that I would like to share. But, and then I, well, I have all the stuff that I want to share, but I want to share it in such a way that makes sense. So that puts the pressure on because I'm not always sensible, but hey, let the Word speak to you, and, let, and, 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 and look at that. Go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. When Judas betrayed the Lord, and Judas killed himself, they were only 11 apostles. They needed to be 12. And to make up the 12 apostle, the person that had to be chosen to make up the 12 apostle. And Peter stands up and he's saying to, to, for this guy to be chosen, he needs to be, have a certain qualifications to meet the criteria of the 12 apostle. All right? So he needs to be. Now let's look at the, in Acts chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and among, out among us. So the man that's going to be chosen had to be among them and he had to go in and out among them and he had to be there when the Lord was with them there. On when? on his earthly ministry, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. By the way, Peter's gospel he's preaching now is not so much just the gospel of the kingdom that he was preaching before the crucifixion. He's preaching the gospel of the circumcision now, which includes what? The resurrection. He's proving that Jesus is very Christ. How? By the resurrection. And this 12th apostle that's going to be standing with him and preaching with him needs to preach the same. But he had to be there since the starting of John. And what were they preaching? Was the law part of the program from from John the Baptist right through the Lord's ministry? Yes. So he was a preacher of the? the, And and, and that, exactly. And they were following the law strictly. Acts chapter 2. And Peter started, they started preaching, the Holy Ghost comes, etc. In Acts chapter 2, verse 46, if you will. And they continually, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house that eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved chapter 3 verse 1 now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour so they're very strict according to the law which is this hours of prayer that you have to go and you got to go to the temple and and you have to um daily uh, and there's daily gatherings in the temple so they very they the, he's still according to the law right and his message includes law he's not excluding laws out of the laws out of here he's still very much a preacher of the law Okay, and they continue daily in the prayer, and, and he says in chapter three, we are the. Um, let's go to verse twenty-four of chapter three. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel, and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kings of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up His Son Jesus, sent Him to bless you in turning every one of you from His iniquities. By the way, um, a part, of the, part of the covenant that Israel went in with the Lord, what was the covenant that they went in with the Lord? The old covenant, right? It was the covenant. They went into the covenant with Abraham, the, the, the circ- of circumcision. They went into the covenant of the law, and they were all part of that covenant there. So it was very much, um, very much at play. Go with me to Acts chapter 21. When Paul gets to Jerusalem again, and we'll may possibly come back to this passage again, but in Acts chapter 21, what am I showing you? That Peter was a preacher of the, the law was part of his message. And they were very zealous of the law still. In Acts, Acts chapter 20, uh, 21, if you will, and I'm not going to, you need to go back and read everything there. I'm not going to do that this morning. Uh, let's see. Verse 18. And the day following, Paul went in, went, went, went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly 
what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified God and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are, and they are zealous of the what? The Jews are still zealous of the what? The law. Okay? And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude much needs come together, for they will hear, hear that thou art come. So the question among these guys, it's very evident they, they don't understand yet that the, what, what Paul is saying about the law is not part of that. They're still enforcing the law and they're zealous of keeping it still. And Peter is doing that and, 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 and because th we'll see in, in Galatians chapter 2 when those comes from James, so-called come from James, but I'm going to say that, comes from James, Peter withdrew from the Gentile because Peter knows God's, and we're going to see just now, he already knows that God's changing the program. There's no more unclean and clean there is no more Jew and, 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 and it's the same, God, um, the, the, that there's no difference between a Jew and a Gentile, and it's okay for him to eat with the Gentiles. And, but when, when, when these guys come from, from, uh, from James, when Peter is there, and he sees these other Jews coming, he says, oh, what are they going to think of me? Let me not eat with the Gentiles. Why would he do that? Because in the mind of the Jew, you cannot have company with a Gentile, an uncircumcision man. Why? Because the law demands it. And if you're going to have company with a, with a Gentile, what are you going to have to do? Circumcise that Gentile. Okay? And that was not the gospel that is the gospel of today. And Peter broke that. And he was to be blamed. Because he caused, ish, he caused among the Gentile believers a lot of issues regarding this su subject. Which Paul already went to Jerusalem for. That's why he got into G Peter's face. Not because he was arrogant and full of himself. He was defending the gospel. And when he's writing to these Galatians, he's establishing his authority. I am the apostle. God has given me the message. And if anybody preach anything else that I'm preaching, he should, he should be anathema. You know, he should be ashamed of what he's saying. It's not right. Because my gospel says we're not under the law. And there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. And he's continuously writing to the church and, and, and addressing these issues. Okay? By the way, he says there, was, uh, go back with me to Galatians chapter 2. Uh, are you guys getting me? <laughs> I know I'm getting me. <laughs> the question is, are you getting me? Uh, listen to the tape a few times over and over. Somebody told me, it's in this assembly here, told me, if, if I go to fast, don't apologize for going fast. Tell you just to listen to the tape a few times. You'll get it. You know, it'll keep, 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 you'll catch up. Um, with that. But in Galatians chapter 2, and when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So Peter comes from where? Jerusalem, which was, that's where he abodes. The center, the, by the way, the center of the gospel of the circumcision is where? Jerusalem. That's the center of the message to the nation of Israel. He goes from Jerusalem to Antioch. What is Antioch? Antioch is the center from where? Where Paul's commission is going from, where, where, the, where the ministry to the Gentiles are going to, that's the center. So Peter comes from his ministry to where this new ministry is the center now, and he comes and have company with these Gentiles and sits with the Gentiles because he knows I'm allowed to do that. And as soon as peer pressure comes on the scene and his fellow, believe, or, uh, fellow Jews comes in, from, who's from James, so he says the Scriptures there, when they come in, Peter says, oh, I can't be with the Gentiles, let me separate myself. And Paul says, that's not the gospel. What are you doing? You're causing these people to want to live like Jews now because you want them to do, they're going to do what you tell them to do now. Now they're going to say, oh, I should, I should circumcise myself now too? Should I go with the hours of prayer to the temple every day? You know, all those questions come because of what Peter did. He was a bad example. He didn't get with the program. Antioch was the base of operations of Paul and the ministry to the Gentiles. You guys get that? You Take that note. If you don't get it, that's fine. Just take note of it. And as you read the Scriptures, you'll see it very clearly. Okay? Paul says, here in verse 11, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. Withstood. 
That's pretty... You read up the word withstood in the Scriptures, and when your word withstood is used, it's used pretty heavily. It is not a light thing. I am going to go against you. I'm going to oppose, and I'm going to be against you. So Peter, when Paul is withstood with, with Peter to the face, what is he doing? He's standing against Peter and says, you are not behaving right. You're not with the program. By the way, go with me to Daniel chapter 10. We use the word withstood there. This man appears in his vision to Daniel with the white linen clothes, etc. And it, this, this stuff takes place up there in heaven. Verse 12 says, Then, then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, Thy words were heard, and I'm come for thy words. But the prince, no, so I'm come to, to support you, I'm coming to, for these words that you have. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. So for twenty-one days I could not get to you. Why? Because somebody was against me and withstanding me from going. To you. It says, but, lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings with Persia. Now I'm come to make this. So what has happened? What, is, what am I trying to tell you here? The word withstood. Another passage where the word withstood is used in Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 13. Paul is just starting out his ministry here. In Acts, chapter 13, he's just being commissioned here with Barnabas to go out. And there's a sorcerer by the name of Elimas, Elimas, okay. Paul is trying to get this deputy of Sergius. Paul is a prudent man. He's just, he wants to desire to hear the word of God. Elimas, is, Elimas, the sorcerer, doesn't want him to hear the word of God. And what does he do? Verse 8 says, And Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. So what is the word withstood? It's pretty heavily used here, right? He don't want them to hear the truth, and that should, that should withstood them. When Paul says he's withstanding, withstood um, Peter to the face, it is serious. He's going contrary against him. He's not saying to Peter, Hey, Peter, let me tell you something. Well, I guess we get to myself to Galatians chapter 2 there quickly. Galatians chapter 2, he says, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. You know, he doesn't come to Peter and says, Hey, Peter, I'm, I'm sorry, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm so sorry to um, inconvenience you. Just, just, just come one side. Yeah, I want to speak to you quickly, man. You know, I, I know how you think, and you know, and, and it's okay. You know, it's, it, he's not apologetic. He says you're wrong, and he doesn't do it privately. He does it publicly. In this passage, we're going to see. He says you do. Why? Why is Paul so blatant about this? Because it's got to do with the gospel. And it, and what Peter was doing was interfering. He was to be blamed for the gospel not being obeyed and followed. And sometimes, we're going to see just now, sometimes it's necessary to call people out in public. Now, you don't get me to call people you by name out by public. Paul does that oftentimes. And we're apologetic about some stuff. And I think sometimes we need to say, hey, listen, this is wrong. Stop it. And there's a process, obviously, that you follow there, you know, but Paul is withstanding him. Paul is never, he's, he's equal to the apostles here. We see it definitely, he must be equal to the apostles. He never saw his, apostle, uh, uh, his apostleship as subservient to the others. Because he would not withstand, because he says, Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1, he says, Rebuke not an elder, nor entreat him as, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. You know what the Bible says about an elder? Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as men as father. And if you're going to rebuke him, you're going to have to do that. And you want to have a problem with him, you're going to have to do it for a few witnesses to do that. Okay? 
So Paul, in Paul's mind, Peter is not above Paul as an elder of Paul. He is an equal. Okay? He has his ministry, Paul has his ministry, but P Peter is not up there and Paul up here. Neither is Paul up here and Peter up here. When it comes to the gospel of the grace of God, Paul is the apostle of this message. And he's going to defend it, whatever it takes to place, even if he has to call out Peter by name for doing what is wrong. Verse 12. Verse 11 says, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. That's in Antioch now. And but when they were come, to, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So what is, he's, with his, he's, he's eating with the Gentiles, and then certain came, he says, and it's interesting the, 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 the language there. For before that certain came from James. Now, who are these certain? I think it's these certain same people that was he talked about earlier in the chapter. Okay. And they came from James. By the way, if you look at James, and, and uh, shall I go there? Uh, go to Acts chapter 15. Let me just find the verse there. The scripture doesn't tell us that James now sending Peter, uh, people to uh, his servants, out to Antioch and tell the guys, you cannot eat with Gentiles or you, can, you should be circumcised. And all. Peter, James says, I never told anybody to do that, especially with the Gentiles. Look at, look at Acts chapter 15, verse 24. For as much as we have heard that certain, with that word certain again, we heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. So James says, who's now taking, we see him taking over as a leadership here. James says, we didn't give any commandments to go to the to Gentiles and tell you that you have to now follow the law and be circumcised. So these certain people that came from James to Antioch, I don't think James sent them there and said, and, and said make sure that Peter's not eating with the Gentiles. I think Peter saw the, the, these guys, and Peter was weak in the flesh and said, hey, whew, these guys are going to think bad with me because I'm eating with the Gentiles, so let me pull away from the Gentiles and not eat with them anymore. Certain came from James. Now, by the way, I said to you this, James is not the brother of, of John because James in chapter, in, and go back with me to Acts chapter 12. Maybe I should go back a little bit further. Go to Mac, Matthew chapter 10, if you will. Just so that you can identify James a little bit. Are you guys following us? Cindy, are you with us? You with us? Okay. In Matthew chapter 10, he says, and uh, uh, he's calling out the disciples and giving them apostolic authority. And when he had called unto him the twelve disciples, he gave them the power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and, brother, and John, his brother. So the James here that he calls as part of the twelve is who? He's now going to be apostle, and he's, and, and, and he's, he's, he's uh, the son of Zebedee is John's brother, right? Go with me to Acts chapter 12, if you will. In Acts chapter 12... Verse 1 and 2. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands and vexed certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. So the, the, the James that was picked in, Act, in, in Matthew chapter 10 is where now? In Acts chapter 12, he's no more. Why? Because Herod got him killed. With what? With a sword. So the James that we're reading about here is not that James. Okay? Now, I'm not going to tell you who's that James. I've already given you some hints. You go home and go read. You look up every term of James in the Scriptures and you identify the James for us, okay? Don't just email me and say, Des, who is he? Go figure it out, okay? So, certain comes from James, Okay? 
Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do, th- I'm so big, wanted to tell you, but you guys figured it out. You guys come tell me next week who's this James, okay? Uh, maybe some of you knows. Anyway, go back with me to uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 12. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circum- uh, circumcision. You know what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25? Go with me to Proverbs 29, 25. Proverbs 29 and verse 25. The fear of a man bringeth a snare. The fear of a man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Peter knew that God told him there is no more difference. Peter knew it was okay for him to eat with the Gentiles. But he's so scared of what people are going to think of him that he withdraws from the Gentiles because he's worried these, these guys are going to think negative of him and, and talk about him, right? And so he would, in the snare of a man, he says, it says the Scripture, bringeth a, uh, the fear of a man bringeth a snare. I think, as, as I look at Peter, and you know, and I said this morning in the Bible study in chapter 9, I think P- Peter was a sincere man, but I think Peter also, and I'm not trying to talk negative about Peter. Peter was one of the apostles. God chose him, and he was God's, one of God's spokesmen. But Peter had a lot of pride. You know, there was a lot of pride in Peter. You know, oh, Lord, I can go with you. You're going to die? I'll go with you. No, no problem, you know. And the Lord says, Haha, let me tell you something. Before the cock crows twice, you're going to deny me three times. Me? No ways. Never, never. And did the cock throw twice after he denied him three times? Thrice? Yes, he did. Okay. Here again, William says, and that's just a quote I have from one of the guys. He says, a man is weak in proportion to his importance before men. A man is weak in proportion to his importance before men. Peter wanted to be important and he wanted to be accepted among his own countrymen. Although no, God says the program has changed. He's still wanting to look good in front of men. So he's weak in that proportion of an importance before men. Because he wants these guys to accept him to do that. What does he do? He gets now weak concerning the gospel. And what does he do? He withdraws from the Gentiles. And now he's a bad example to the Gentiles of the liberty that the Gentiles have. It says also, it is a great snare for the heart to seek to maintain a reputation amongst men. Listen to it again. It is a great snare for the heart to seek to maintain a reputation among men. It's a snare. When you put yourself to a point, you say, you know what? I'm not going to see myself as anything before men. I'm going to make myself servant to all. You know what? That's liberty. Once you put yourself up there, we saw Paul and uh, Peter had no liberty when he was eating with the Gentiles because when those guys certain come from James, what did he do? He pulled away from them. You get that? He separates to the Gentiles. Go with me to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. What happens in Acts chapter 10? Paul gets saved back in Acts chapter 9. Programs changing. God is calling Peter out and says to Peter, and he gives him this vision. How many times does he tell Peter to kill and eat? Three times or three times? Three times. Okay. And Peter said, verse 28 in Acts chapter 10, And he said unto them, Ye know how it is, it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. In Acts chapter 10, what is God showing him through this vision of the sheets from the four corners and with all these animals kill and eat? There is nothing unclean that I've made now clean. And God says, and Peter says, in acknowledges here, back in Acts chapter 10, he's already acknowledged that God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Because God is sending him to now to a Gentile's house by the name of Cornelius. 
right? Now we're a bunch of chapters later, and Peter, is, which God have told him, hey, it's okay for you to eat with the Gentiles. And what does Peter say? Ooh, I'm not going to do this. What are they going to? What are going to think of me when I do that? Let me withdraw from that. You get that? Peter understood the change, but he was more worried about what men think of him than wanting to please what God was doing of the day. Okay. Because where was he? In Jerusalem or in Antioch? He was in Antioch. He was in another man's territory. He was in another. He was among the Gentiles out there. Galatians chapter 2. Those kids are having a lot of fun out there. You hear them? Who's taking care of them? Who's in there? Who? Oh, okay, tell me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 12 says, for, for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, and when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision, the fear of men. Verse 13, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. Now guess what? There was other Jews with Peter eating with the Gentiles. And now when Peter withdrew, what happened? These other Jews withdrew as well. For the other Jews dissembled likewise with him insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with this dissimulation. Who's Barnabas? Barnabas was the guy that God separated with Paul to start his first missionary journey to go out and preach. He's a Jewish kingdom saint. And God sends, and Barnabas gets the picture, understand what God is doing. There's no more difference. Middle wall of petitioning has been separated. Barnabas knows it and gets it because he's standing shoulder to shoulder with Paul, preaching this very message of, liber of liberty and uh, uh, without the nation of Israel, that all is equal. And Barnabas is taken up by Peter's example. And he withdraws as well with this dissimulation from the Gentiles. Can you imagine the confusion among the Gentiles now that God just gets this message? they got to look at these guys, Peter and Barnabas and the other Jews. Uh, what's going on now? Oh, maybe we should be circumcised. Maybe we should keep the, the, the Sabbath. Maybe we should do these things. Because definitely with Peter's example, what he's doing now is telling us, hey, we should separate from the Gentiles. So, so God is still doing this. Can you see the confusion among the Galatians? Can you see the confusion among the Gentiles now in Antioch? No wonder Paul stands up and, and rebukes him to the face and says, Man, you're not getting with the. What are you doing? And I'm sure it wasn't very kind words when he was standing him to the face. You ask my son what it means when I say I get in his face. He knows I'm serious when I get into his face. I'm not saying, oh, you know what, you know, sorry to inconvenience you, but, you know. No, I get in his face. Listen, get with the program here. Yeah. And the other Jews assembled likewise with him, and as much as Barnabas was also carried away with a dissimulation. Why do you think Paul is sharing all this information? He's making a point. That we do not live under the law. And Peter's example and the issue of the rebuke is verses 14 to 21 is his rebuke, which we will follow in the next few weeks. We're not going to get to that today. I can tell you now already. We're not going to get there. But the rebuke is verse 14 to 21. And the rebuke is to Peter and the others. And it's for the Galatians to learn from this. We are not subject to the law. The law cannot justify us. So why would you want to separate? What's wrong with you? When you know the law can't justify you and declare you're righteous, why would you want to do what you're doing? Paul's own companion was separated unto the or that was that was separated to the ministry was was taken away with this dissimulation, this peer pressure, if you will, the modern day word that we know called peer pressure. Dissembled. 
That word dissembled, you look, that word dissembled, he says in verse 13, and the other Jews dissembled likewise. That word dissembled, you know what that word means? Hypocritically in concert with. Hypocritically in concert with. You know what that word means? They were a bunch of hypocrites, including Peter. He was a hypocrite. I tell you what, you go to a church today, in this city, is one of them already, and you walk into that church and you're making a statement, hey, I want to tell you that Peter was a hypocrite. I almost guarantee you won't walk out there alive. <laughs> Hypocritically in concert with. That means they're standing, they're a bunch of hypocrites. Scared more about what people think of them than what God is doing. Dissimulation, verse 13. Likewise with him, insomuch as Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. The word dissimulation, hiding under a false appearance. You know what were they? They were false. You know what Peter were? He was false. He was hypocritical. I'm not saying that. The Scriptures are saying that. Carried away. That word carried away was carried away. He said Barnabas was also carried away. When you read in the Scriptures about carried away, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. You know what? They were carried away to what? To the dumb idols. Did they just? How, do, how were they carried away to, 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 to worship or to get unto the and, 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 and having dumb idols? They were, says the Bible, there led. Who was the leader of the pack of this dissimulation and the disassembly that's taking place in Antioch? Peter was the leader of the pack there. And in just the same way that the Gentiles were carried away into worshiping dumb idols, Peter carries these Jews away and, 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 and enforcing the law by doing that. That's the point here. He's now enforcing the law by doing that. And you can't do that in Antioch. Because that's not part of the ministry. That's not part of the gospel. You are contrary to the gospel now. Look at Acts, Galatians chapter 2, and the, verse 13 says, And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, and as much as Barnabas was also carried away with their dissimulation. But, I went, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. That tells me something. The truth of the gospel told me that what they did there was wrong. I said unto Peter with them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Now that could sound confusing when you read it. But you know what is he saying? He says, you know, you, 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 live, you go to Antioch and you live like a Gentile by doing what? Eating with the Gentiles, and it's all okay. Then these Jews come in, the certain Jews come, and what do you do? Now you start acting like a Jew. Bye. Dissembling from these guys. So what are you wanting to tell a Jew? The Gentiles, now you need to live as Jews. That's what you're telling them. You're telling them to go back to the law. And he's going to tell them in the next verses, his rebuke, his doctrinal rebuke, starts in verse 14 and it goes through to verse 21 of what was going on here. And I'll just read for you because our time is up and we're not going to get through this. Verse 60, we, we, he says, we who are Jews by nature, the we, Paul is including himself as a Jew. Guess he's a Jew. He doesn't act like a Jew. He's acting like a believer and the saint of the body of Christ now, but <laughs> he understands where he's coming from. And so we're not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man, he says, we know. He says, Peter, you know what? We know. We know some things, Peter. We know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. And the point here is, and the things that we can praise God for this morning, is the fact is that you and I have been justified by the faith of Christ. You know, the, the, the object of our justification is the faith of Christ. But for you to be justified by the faith of Christ, you need to have faith in Christ. 
Your faith in Christ doesn't justify you. What justifies you is the faith of Christ. But you've got to place your faith and trust Christ, because that's what the verse says there. Look at verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. That's what justifies you and I, is the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So what justifies us? The faith of Christ. What do we need to do? Trust Christ. That's my faith. Believing God. Believing what Christ was faithfulness, His justification. Your justification was accomplished on Calvary by the faith of Christ. Not by your faith in Christ. Your faith in Christ doesn't justify you. The faith of Christ justifies you. But you have to place your faith in the faith of Christ, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I think a lot of people don't get that, unfortunately. Because it's what I do. Oh, Lord, I give my heart to you. I turn from my sins. I now give you permission to become Lord of my life. Really? That's not going to justify you. What justifies you and I is the faith of Christ. And I choose to place my faith in Christ's faith. And we'll talk about this a little bit later because we're going to now bring in the issue that, that Peter really did. He went back to the law and he was enforcing the law really by his example to these in Antioch. And we're going to look at that and what, what Paul has to say about this in, in the next, not next week, but the week after. Amen? Praise the Lord. We're going to sing a song, a closing song now this morning and it is called... Just so sweet to trust in Jesus.